Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me begin this way. We are of all generations most fortunate. We have all generations before, till now, most blessed that we have these words, the sacred scriptures, hallelujah, we have the words of God written for us to read every day. Some people don't for a moment take time to think that there was a time men related with God without a script, without no point of reference to script, without no written words to allude to and things to debate against. Of whose realities were experienced as person was the Lord revealed himself to the men and women of their times. You've read of the fathers of the faith like Abraham. The Bible says he was worshipping the sun and God appeared unto him and tells him, leave your people, your kindred, your family, your folk, go to a land that I will show you. And he left his father's house and the Bible says he went without knowing. That's how he experiences God. You've heard of men like Moses who are in burning bushes. The bush is burning and it's not being consumed. And out of there a voice comes through and sets this man on the course for the redemption of the children of Israel. You've heard of prophets in caves and of men in deserts. You've heard of men in the wilderness. You've heard of men in their own houses. You've had some seated in the tents where they encounter God. You've had some sleeping and then God comes to them and makes covenants with them. You've had some of whom the Lord wrestled with personally and gave them different names. That is our history. That's where we come from. Now the reason why we can go to all of these and carry the records is because somebody cared to write. Are you hearing me? And then we have the own set of Christ. The Gospels written by Mark, Luke, Matthew, John, and the letters then that proceed of Paul, the book of Revelation, and now you and I have a Bible and something to give reference to. But many people never ask themselves the, the fundamental question, and that is, why was the scripture written? Why did God find it important to keep records for you and I? If you go in history and then you read about what leads to the canonization of the Old Testament and what leads to the canonization of the New Testament in 367 AD, to agree and say, what is canonization? To consider second, that these are the books that we accept for the Old Testament, these are the books that we accept for the New Testament, and in time before history there are men who were even debating whether the Old Testament was relevant at all because then to some of them only the books of Paul made sense. But our fathers who sat down years ago, we thank God for them. It was conferred on them to sit in meetings to agree that these things should be preserved for the generations to come. As of whether they knew the extent and intent to which God had to work through them in the preservation of the scriptures, I don't think they'll ever have the full account. But now in this dispensation, as in the last days, knowledge is increasing. Some people, some of us are coming to the realization of how important it was that they would keep these records for us. Men died for preaching the truth. Read such history. Whether you're talking of John Wycliffe, who was killed. Why? For preaching the truth. John Hoos, killed. Why? For preaching the truth. You understand? Oregon, why? For drawing systematic theology, for opening men to the reality of truth. 
William Tyndale, the man that translates the Old Testament anew from the other language to English, that man was killed under the sword of men who preferred the church to stay in a certain ignorance. Because through that, religion will become a political tool for men to conquer, for men to take over, for men to rule and extend their own personal initiatives. You've seen people burning down these things in ancient history. You've seen people against the Bible in history. You've seen men who abused it, men like Voltaire, who say that the Bible is read by imbeciles, believed by fools. Are you hearing me? There was a time where they believed that this thing we are reading, it's useless. One time I heard a politician on television saying that Christianity is opium for the poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I always tell people that from the onset and the first print of the Bible till 2019, it has been the best selling book in human history. Fiction cannot sell that far. Tell your neighbor, fiction can't sell that far. And the Bible and the scriptures written there have outlived every critic, every scientist, every physician, every debater. They've outlived every rational idea that has existed. They've outlived every liberal mind that has existed. They've outlived every philosophical thought that has existed. Why? Because the Bible says, in them you find life. He says, for the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Praise God. But many of us have never asked ourselves the question, why was the gospel written? Why was it preserved? Why was it fought that men would not receive truth? Why were men killed for interpreting the gospel and the truth therein? Why would they kill John Wycliffe? Because the man is simply saying, that salvation is through faith and faith alone. Not the veneration of a certain woman. Not indulgences. Not the extra things that you have to do. But only faith through Christ. Why is it that there's been a lot of bloodshed? Men have died on the streets in, in their homes. Some were burned to stake. Families were separated. Some were imprisoned. Some were buried alive. All because the gospel had to be preserved for you. But you see, many of us have never asked ourselves, why was the Bible written? Why were the scriptures written? What is this one thing that Satan knew? What was that thing that he understood that if it gets to the believer, there is no hope for him? What is that one thing Satan knew that if a believer comes to the realization of and has and builds in their soul, there is nothing impossible with them. What is that thing that he holds back to make sure that he frustrates every written material and debates and fights it with everything he has? The Bible says in Romans chapter 15, verse 4, that for whatsoever things were written aforetime, the Bible says they were written for our learning, that through patience and comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. All of these things that were written and for, for your learning were intending one thing, that God will give the children of men hope. Because Satan knows the power of a man who hopes. He knows what it means to hope in the Lord. He knows how much power is available to a man and a woman who says, you know what, I hope in God. And God is telling you all of these things were written a four times for your learning. That through patience, underline the word patience, and comfort of the scriptures, he says you might have hope. Somebody shout hallelujah. That you might have hope. He knows everything we read, whether it's every pastor on the face of the earth preaching. Every minister writing books and selling CDs and sending out memory sticks and writing articles and blogs and opening Facebook pages and all of these things. The end of this is simple. That a man through patience 
and comfort of the scriptures might have hope because there is a power in a man having hope. There is something very deliberate by God that infuses the power of God in any human soul that dares to have hope. Satan knows that without hope we can't leave. Satan knows that without hope, even a banana can break your tooth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Satan knows that without hope, we are doomed. We are dead. We don't have a life. We don't have a future. Satan knows that without hope, we cannot walk in the purification of the spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 3, he says that every man that has this hope in him, the Bible says, purifies himself even as he is pure. It is the only thing that makes you say, you know what, I'm not going to walk this way because I have the hope of seeing the coming back of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because I hope in the second coming of Jesus, there is something that causes me to walk in the purification of God even as I am pure. That even if you're the craziest Christian there is, there's something inside you telling you, I have to be better than I was yesterday. I have to walk out of this sin. I have to kill this habit. I have to kill this circumstance. God knows. He knows that if we have hope, when you understand the working there, okay, if you understand it in the present truth, the Bible says he purifies himself even as he is pure. So the purity of the new believer is not a thing you become. It is a thing you practice because you eat. Somebody shout hallelujah. But the thing that gives us that ability is called hope. It is not hope if it cannot lead purity and purify you. If it can't lead to purity and purify you, then we're not talking about the God kind of hope. Praise God. But also, it is not hope if it is sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verses 24, he says that, for we are saved by hope. He knows that this is the thing that brings salvation. It is the thing that brings you and I salvation. He says, for we are saved by hope. The Bible says, but hope that is seen, the Bible says, is not what? Hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet hope for? In other words, the thing I'm talking about is not something you can see with your physical eye. The thing I'm talking about, deeper than what I can express, is not something that you can say you have when there is evidence that explains the reason of success on your life. You cannot say that you have a house, you have a car, you have everything around you, and then you say, I have hope. Hope that is seen. It's not hope. He's trying to tell you and I that you can't elude hope in the things physical that are working all okay. Hope is that thing that begins, that is birthed in a human spirit when everything is contrary to what you see with your physical eyes. Somebody shout hallelujah. Satan knows the power of seeing without physical sight. The exercised spirit that designs both good and evil. And it begins with knowledge. Hallelujah. And that knowledge defines the experience of the man and woman in God. But it says that for hope that is not, that is sin is not hope. For what a man sees, why does he yet, yet hope for? The Bible says, but if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. That is why he requires a patience, because this is not something you can see with your physical eye. It is not something that carries physical evidence. So when they say faith is the substance of things hoped for, it is not something that at that material time is present in the physical realm. The Bible says in Romans chapter 4, verses 17, he says that it is written, he goes to Abraham and he tells him, I have met thee a father of many nations, before him whom he was. The Bible says he believed him, even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth the things which be not as though they were. He told Abraham, I have met thee a father of nations. He did not tell him, I will make you. 
The realization in the spirit of Abraham is not when he sees the fulfillment of the word of God upon his life. The realization of the faith in Abraham is when he can fully conceive and concede in his spirit the reality of what God has made him to be yet he's not physically. The language of God does not say I will make you prosperous. That is not how God speaks. That is men speaking to men who can only understand by using a will, a could, a might, a should, a shall. Because many people cannot relate the physical experience with their spiritual experiences. But for those who have learned to reconcile their physical and their spiritual, God does not say, I will make you. Because if he says, I will, it means he's going to put a condition. And if he puts a condition, then it is of works. And if it is of works, it cannot be of faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. If it is of works, then there's a surety of qualifying one and disqualifying another. But if it is of faith, the Bible says, the promise will be sure to both who are circumcised and those that are not what? Circumcised. Somebody shout hallelujah. The Bible says, therefore, it is of what? faith, Romans 4, 16, that it might be by grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to that which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham, who is the father of our soul. So God cannot say, I will make you rich. I will make you successful. I have made you successful. I have made you rich. I have made you healthy. I have made you wise. I have made you the question with Abraham was, was he ready to believe? Do you believe that you are? Or you think you will be? Some people confuse the patience and waiting on the Lord for the manifestation of a thing the Lord has spoken as though the reality is in the manifestation of the thing. No, the reality of this person and integrity of the word is in simply believing that you are before you become. Listen, God does not work any other way except that way. If God call it the things that be not as though they are, you will never manifest anything in the physical realm without believing and calling the things that are not as though they are. He said if a man should speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. Let him speak as the language of God. Let him speak as God speaks. Oh, look at yourself and say, I'm wise. I'm rich. I'm healthy. I'm blessed. I'm big. In the name of Jesus. My name is great already. It's too late for the devil. I'm healthy. From the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. My house is filled with goodly treasures. In the name of Jesus. Gentiles are coming to my light. Kings are coming to my rising. Strangers are serving me already. Nations, listen to my voice. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm going upward and upward only. I don't fail. I've never failed. I will never fail. It's not in my DNA. It is finished. Tell your neighbor it is finished. It is finished to the glory of God. Do you believe it? Then it is manifestedly so. So, some of you, do you know why you don't, God doesn't respond to your prayer? You go to, to him and say, heal me. You're healed. Heal me. You're healed, but heal me. Okay, why do you say you're sick? If I'm, if I'm healed, why do I feel pain? Because that's the language of God. He doesn't work. <laughs> you see, let me open your mind to the inner understanding of the law of creation. Because creation is a law. Are you hearing me? Like creativity is a spirit. When God thinks a thing on you, spiritually, it is established. 
When God proclaimed something on you spiritually, it was established. Did you hear that? Is established, was established. So even if he says, I will heal you, the literal rendering should be, I healed you. Because he doesn't live in your time series of yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. With him are no time limitations. That is why I tell people the fourth dimension of the spirit is understanding the time. The time. Not time. Time, the time, not athlete time, the time. When you learn to live from eternity and understand how God relates with humanity from eternity, you realize that every time you evade in earthly affairs, you'll be above the usual natural man. Why? Because the natural man is waiting to see what will happen tomorrow for him to justify to find vindication and give reason for his existence. The man of the spirit is not waiting for tomorrow. We have been to the end of the life of men. We died. And the Bible says, and our real life is in Christ. For he says in him we live, move, and have our own being. That means you are not just a human being. You are also a Christ. Jesus does not relate with tomorrow like men of this world relate to tomorrow. Your limitation is your mind because it can only adopt to the speed of mortal men. That is why the spirit quickeneth. The essence of the spirit is to flash light, or are you hearing me? To your physical body, to your mortal man, to your soul to receive understanding. The spirit of a regenerated man in God is not progressive. It does not come to realization of things. No, that is your soul coming. Your spirit doesn't come to realization of things. Why? Because your spirit is eternal. He is realm, he, 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 he's helm in the God realm. He, his definition, your spirit man definition is in the God realm. The problem with, with why many of us cannot plug there, firstly, we don't believe it. Two, we don't know it. And we cannot know it, therefore we can't believe it. Because knowledge brings the, 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 the believing. Many of us don't believe that the earth, as it's progressing, you know, is too slow for the sons of God. And you know, the only ingredient for access is through faith. What do I mean by faith? To believe that you are ahead of the physical man. To believe that your life is in Christ. To believe that you hold the very thoughts and feelings of Christ. He says, for who has known the mind of Christ? Who knows it? Who can instruct? He says, the Amplified says, but we have the mind of Christ. And do hold, listen, do hold, do hold, listen, do hold, do hold, the what? The thoughts, that is feelings and purposes of his heart. Do you know what it means to hold the thoughts and feelings and purposes of his heart? That means when, when you're full and mature in the faith, in this understanding, you will know that it's not what would Jesus do. Because that separates you from the reality of the thought, the feeling and purpose that he has. He says you have the mind. That means you have to get to a point where you believe that present continuance, Christ is thinking through you to fill and to purpose in his heart, in the fulfillment of the assignment of the gospel on earth. It begins with a man that has to choose to believe. You have to believe. Nobody sits from athlete time to the timing of the spirit, fourth dimensional, without having experienced this life of faith. Inner realms are all accessed by faith. And every level of faith is defined by every level of revelation. And sometimes it's not enough that the revelation is sent. They are to whom some the revelation is sent, but they are not able. That is why Jesus says, let him who is able listen or receive or take it. Let him who is able receive it. Why? Because the Bible says some are dull of hearing. 
For some, it's not that revelation is not come, no. For some, even as they hear these things, they, they, these things are too high for them to exercise themselves therein. Are you hearing me? So, for some, as I'm speaking of a fourth dimension, many of you are learning of it. You cannot judge it. Are you hearing me? Because again, you can't judge a dimension you're in. You can only judge a dimension you've transited out of. Fifth, sixth, eighth dimensional Christians are the same, are the ones who can understand fourth dimensional, third, second, and first dimensional truth. You cannot judge a matter you're not over. That is why the psalmist says, I do not exercise myself in matters higher than I. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? He says, my heart is not holy, nor the my eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in greater matters, praise God, or in things too high for me. So, you can only judge the realm that you're in. That is why it's very expedient for every Christian to have understanding. Because God deals with you according to your level of understanding. If your understanding is high, he will speak to you as one with understanding. He will work in your ear as an ear that is learned. Right? Your ear, your hearing is learned. Your, your, your sight is taught. Your, your mind is prepared. It has the understanding. So everything spoken is to the level of your understanding. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, that is how God separates those who lead and those who follow. Those who follow. The Bible says by his knowledge, depths are broken. Do you know what that means? It means that the foundations, you can only break what you're going to build. That's the mind of the spirit. He, he cannot break to break. In him is not a who for who. He does not create nothingness, voidness and emptiness. Are you hearing me? He's the author of beauty, the perfection of beauty in Zion. So when it says that his depths are broken by knowledge, they can only be broken to establish a foundation. The depths of God can only be broken to establish a certain foundation because God knows you can never go as high if you have not gone as deep. So the essence of the Christian faith is to give subtlety to the simple that God might launch you deeper in understanding. As you go deeper in understanding, your height becomes clearer. You go May it happen to you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a place of faith. You have to believe it. It has to be so real. It has to be a reality. But you see, you're saying it, man of God, but I don't get it. Don't worry. Exercise yourself therein. Meditate in this thing. The Bible says your profiting will be evident among all. We don't minister with gifts. We don't minister with gifts. We minister with divine authority. Are you hearing me? Gifts create room. Ministry is a different ordeal. Every person is qualified to the degree of your ministry according to how much is revealed to you in the authority that is placed upon you in Christ. And you can increase the authority operating on your life through knowledge and revelation. Satan is not shaken by people who scream. Satan is not shaken by people who pray. Satan is not shaken by people who fast. Satan is shaken by people who know God. Because he knows the only way man can be free is the knowledge of truth. Only that. You will know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He knows it. Every area of limitation in your life has an equal measure of ignorance in you. It's not how bad the doctors say it is. It's not how bad the economy says it is. It's not how bad the net is. No, no, no. It's knowledge. That is why I tell people, invest in knowledge. Tell your neighbor, invest in knowledge. So by faith we have access. Now he tells Abraham, I have made you a father to many nations. And you know what? Abraham believed it. 
after that word, Abraham knew he was a father to nations. He never looked at it as a future experience. He looked at it as a present life experience. And the Bible says, before whom he believed even God who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they are. But you see now, you've called me something I physically cannot see. Now I need to create an atmosphere to wait on you as one who has. To wait on you as one who is. Are you hearing me? That is hope. Did you get it? That is hope. So that is why the next verse says, in verses 18, he says, who against hope believed in hope? Are you hearing me? Who against hope believed in hope? You know why the Bible says who against hope? They mean that Abraham was against hope. He only means that everything spoken was against hope. But he believed in hope. He believed in the positioning of the self to wait on God as one who is and has, not will be or will have. Did you understand what I just said? So the Bible says, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. He says, so shall I see thee. Now, come on. Listen to the rendering of the scriptures. He says, according to that which was spoken. According to that which was spoken, he became. That means hope was the bridge for him to become. Did you understand what I just said? He had to wait as one who is. To work patiently as one who is. Are you hearing me? with the substance of faith that comes by the word he heard. Because faith is the substance of the things you hope for. It's the material. Where do you get the mandate to believe for what you hope for? Faith. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If God has said you are, that is the material. If God has said you're blessed, that is the material. Now faith is the material of things hoped for. Here he's saying, when you're dealing with the issue of hope, you don't physically see it. It's not immediately there. But even when it's not immediately there, you act, live, and do everything around you, not as one who is going to become, but as one who is, such that you can become. You cannot become if you're not the one who is and act like the one who is because God said you are. Did you hear what I just said? So the next verse says, and he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But the Bible says, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Now let me explain the rendering there for strong in faith. Strong in faith means he kept reminding himself of the word God had spoken. Do you know when God says you were healed? And then everything is going south. But you continue saying, I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. Oh, I was healed. Pa, pa, pa. Now, you know, you're running mad. Eh? You're going to really die in this foolishness. I was healed. That's he stayed strong in faith, bringing glory or giving glory to God. Hallelujah. So, how do you say? How do you say? We give you glory. No, no. You don't give glory to God by speaking that God will give you glory. You give glory to God by being strong in faith. To stand against hope, but believe in hope. Did you understand what I just said? So now you think, oh, you know, glory. we give you glory. We give you glory. We, we give you glory. Wow. <laughs> we give you glory. Then they receive a message. They fried. Oh my God. <laughs> then they turn. <laughs> How could they say? I can't breathe. I can't breathe. We give you glory. <laughs> no. That's giving glory to God. 
by being strong in faith and against hope believing the next verse says and being fully persuaded that he which had fully persuaded fully persuaded fully persuaded that he which had promised he was also able to perform oh my god tell your neighbor he that promised was also able to what to perform praise god he was able to perform so he didn't consider his own body he didn't look at the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't consider that he didn't have a job. She did not consider that they told her that if she doesn't swallow this medicine by 2 a.m. she's going to die. He didn't consider how many books he had or he didn't have. He did not consider how much had died and what hadn't. He didn't care how bad his ministry had failed. She didn't mind how bad her story was because it was everywhere. It was on radio. It was in the newspapers. It was everywhere. He, she did not consider. The Bible says. Because if you do, you're weak in faith. And the Bible says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Hallelujah. He stuck a note of the promise. He threw unbelief, but he, he was confident. He was persuaded. The Bible says, he was persuaded. If God has said it, it has to come to pass. But while it's on its way, if I'm a person of hope, are you hearing me? Then I have to see that it has passed. Did you get what I just said? I have to see that it has passed. I have to act like it has passed. I have to respond to stimuli like it has passed. I have to relate with hypothesis like it has passed. I have to deal with people like it has passed. Oh, you know, I'm just getting there. We shall get there someday. No, I am there. Hallelujah. I believe I am there. I believe that it is working in me already. You know, I feel, I see by the Spirit, God is opening up certain wells. Some wells were dead. Some wells were dead. I feel God is opening up certain wells. I feel that certain brooks are being stirred. I feel it. Somebody receive it. Mm. Mm. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. To the glory of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So I ask, I ask God, what is that thing that if a man does it, It's proof enough exercised in the spirit that they have believed that they are before they become. And what does it mean to wait on the Lord? What does it mean to be patiently waiting on the Lord? <laughs> the Bible says in Psalms 42 verses 9, this is a man, the psalmist is speaking of a situation where things had fallen apart. Nothing was really working. He said, I will say unto my rock, God my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? He felt forgotten. Right? And the Bible says, why go I mourning because of the oppression of my enemies? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? He asks his heart, why hast thou downcast, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? He tells his soul, hope in God. You see, this is a man, you see, things you can wake up. You see, some of you, when we start talking, some of you don't have a clue. 
you were born well, you went to a nice school, probably your parents were rich, you never fell sick, if you were sickness it was just the usual flus and coughs. The three days off, you're, you're healed the second day, but the third day you need to stay home and enjoy Ribena and local Z. Some of you don't know sickness. Some of you don't know what poverty is. Some of you don't know what it means to wake up and almost the whole world is against you. As if, not really so, but it can seem like everything... Have you ever woken up and you feel like God has left you? Some of you are witness, you understand? You go through things and you're like, but God, are you really here? Oh, I'm playing church. Some of us fell sick. I remember a day, many years ago, when a woman told me, everything in science has been given to you. This is the last medicine we're giving you. She looked at me straight in the face and said, if this one doesn't cure you, you're going to die. I coughed, I did everything. The woman told me, if this medicine does not work, there is no other medicine on the face of the earth that is going to save you. I took the medicine, guess what? It did not work. When some of us speak, we know what we are talking about. A doctor looks at you and tells you you don't have months. Oh, I wish they are still alive. A doctor looks at you more than 10 years ago and tells you you don't have months. He says, some of you, your hope is too much in men that when you receive certain news, you will die. Surely. Let me add the word, verily, verily. Have you ever hit rock bottom so hard that you know no man can get you out of something? Have you ever received a report that would make you look, stay awake the whole night thinking up to the next day? Not because you don't have sleep in your body, but just thinking at how frail human life is. And indeed, like, like the psalmist writes and Isaiah, it starts grass. The glory is like a flower. You see everything fading away and you don't have control over anything. Now, if you've never been there, you cannot understand hope. Some of you, you've had problems but with predictable solutions. Yes, we don't have fees, but my father can borrow. Yes, I'm not yet married, eh, but I, I'm not single. <laughs> it might not be bad. I have somebody in the world who... Yes, I, I don't have anyone in my life, but eh, when I look in the mirror, I'm like... <laughs> Something's going to come up. Someday something's going to come up. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about deeper issues. <laughs> Look at Job. You know the story of Job. In the first chapter, the 13th verse, the Bible says, a day comes when his sons and daughters are eating and a messenger comes unto him and tells him, the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them and the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Oh, that is so sad. They've also slain your servants to the edge of sword, and I am only one which is lost only. Oh my God, kill all my servants. Some of you just say, oh, it's children, but there are servants that are like children. The book of Proverbs says, if you raise a servant since childhood, well, the Bible says, when they grow up, they become a son. So some servants were like his own children. Are you hearing me? And while he was yet speaking, now picture yourself. Some of you say you have problems. Picture yourself. And your job, you're hearing this, you're the richest man in the East. You have everything. You have hundreds and hundreds of animals. You have seven boys and how many girls. You have everything there is to life. You're a happy man. And then they tell you, oh, 
this has happened. And as while one is speaking, another one comes and says, the fire of God is falling in heaven and has burned up the sheep, the servants, and consumed them. I only am escaped alone to tell. It's so funny. There is a way messengers are preserved. Messengers of bad news. The ones who know to narrate it well, eh? they are in hospitals, they are in schools, they are to workplace. Do you know there are people who know how to narrate evil? Hey, you're gone. Yeah, you're gone. You think they, eh, you know, eh, 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 eh. They don't even need to say that. Eh, oh, oh, oh. You, yeah. I don't know, there are people who are so dramatic. They know how to carry bad news. They can't just say, it has failed, sorry, no. Yes. Oh! Woo! What? You tell me. I don't know how to tell you. Oh! Uh, you speak. Ha! Huh. You first sit down. I don't want to tell you when you're standing, you might faint. Now, who told you I'm going to faint? Ah, 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 ah. I know what it's like. Even worse, you can die from here. Who told you I'm going to die? Eh? Let me first think it through because it's too much. Really? And then they torture you. Praise God. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away and slain the slaves with the age of sword. I only am I left. And while he was just speaking, there came also another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they were dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell. The Bible says, Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down on the ground and did what? That is a man who knows hope. Imagine all that loss comes through. And you say, God, you are good. You are a wonderful God. I know something is happening for me. I might not know how it's going to turn up or through whom it is going to come through. But I have this confidence in me that something will change. And the Bible says that in all this, Job did not judge God foolishly. Second chapter. Third verse. God comes back again boasting. Uh -huh. You considered my servant that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth and eschewest evil. And he still holds fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. He's lost his children, he's lost his animals, he's lost everything there is in his life. But he has not judged me foolishly. What a hope. What a hope. Are you hearing me? And the Bible says, ah, Satan says, no, no, no. Skin for skin. All that a man has, he will give his life for. Afflict this guy. And you see whether he what? won't deny you. The Bible says, Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot until his crown. And he took him up a pot shard to, to scrap himself with all and he sat down among the ashes. Then his wife said unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Hallelujah. But he said unto her, you speak as one of the foolish women speaketh. As in, the Bible says in all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Are you hearing me? You know that you can go through things and people start saying, ah, uh -uh, that one is gone. Oh, with the things that have hit, mm -mm, that one is not going to come through. No. Satan knows you can lose everything. But if you keep your hope. What is hope? Hope is the expectation that something good will come. Hope is the expectation 
that something good will come. The counting that eternal salvation shall work out for you anyway. The man is in all boils and things are eating him up. And the scriptures say, he says, but I believe to see God in my flesh. This is a man who has been eaten up by everything. He says his friends had deserted him. People left him. People started scorning at him. People started speaking evil about him. But the Bible says, but I have believed to see God in my flesh. Somebody shout hallelujah. He believes to see God in his flesh. Things can come and hit you so bad. So bad. The one time you can wake up and say, but God, this was something I never thought would ever happen to me. I thought it could happen on anybody else, but not me. Have you ever been there? Where some happens to you and you're like, but ever since I was little, I thought this one can happen to everybody else except me, but it is in my house. It is in my business. It is in my marriage. It is in my children. It is in my body. It is in my ministry. I never dreamed that it would happen, but it has happened. And then some commit suicide and die. But a man says that though after my skin and worms are destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God. He knows even if everything destroys my flesh and skin, yet in my flesh I will see God. That's, that's the thing that keeps telling you God will come through. Something good will come out of this. This is not the end of my story. My end is not this one. Uh-uh. I wait on the salvation of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. So, hope is not only that. Let's go a bit deeper here. But it is also that thing that stirs joy in your spirit. When you wait on, as you wait on the Lord. Because it's one thing to say, I'm hoping. No, 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 no. That's not hope. That is not the God kind of hope. Praise God. No, 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 no. It, it has a joyful confidence. An expectation of eternal salvation. The continuous thing that tells you that something will come out of this situation. Must come out. Of this situation. Somebody said hallelujah. Romans chapter 12 verses 12. That's the principle I live by. I learned it many years ago. It's those three things. The Bible says you're always rejoicing in what? In hope. Patient in what? Tribulation. Continuing in what? In prayer. That's it. Those are three things. Every believer must have those three things as shields and bucklers of their faith. You're always rejoicing in hope. Patient in what? Tribulation and continuing in constant prayer. Instant prayer. Continue in prayer. You never stop to pray. You never stop to wait on God in tribulation. And you never stop to rejoice in hope. It is not hope if it is not with joy and confidence. Tell your neighbor it's not hope. If it is not joy in confidence. First Peter chapter 1 verses 8. He says, Whom having not seen, ye love. You know, you have not seen him come through yet. That job has not yet come through. Your marriage is not yet working. Your businesses are still frustrated. You still go to the doctor and they find HIV positive. But the Bible says, even though you have not seen him, you what? You love him. In whom, though you see him not, yet what? Believing, listen, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. Did you, oh, did you hear that? He said, even though you have not seen the manifestation of your healing, of your breakthrough, of your, because you believe, you rejoice with joy unspeakable. No, I'm talking about fake joy. Joy does not come to a believer because he has gotten a miracle. Joy does not come to a believer because you've gotten a certain manifestation. No. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, comes because you have believed. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why he says, your father Abraham, 
rejoiced when he saw my day. He saw it and he was glad. Why? Because God told him seed. And the Bible says in Galatians, and he spoke of one seed, which is Christ. So when God tells Abraham that out of you is coming Christ, what did he start doing? Did you understand what I just said? Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Yet believing, you rejoice. He didn't say, yet with a breakthrough. He didn't say, yet with a healing report. He didn't say, yet with a proposal. He, said, he didn't say, yet with, a, with an appointment later. He didn't say, yet because the church is... No, he says, yet believing. Because you believe. The Bible says, you rejoice with joy, unspeakable, full of glory. Somebody say, shout hallelujah. That is why Romans 15, 13 calls him the God of hope. He's called the God of hope. He says, now the God of hope, listen, he says, fill you with all what? Joy and what? And peace in what? Believing. You, you believe, but you have peace about it. Hallelujah. You believe and you have joy about it. He says that the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing. The Bible says that she made a bound in what? How do you abound in hope? You have peace and joy in believing. And the Bible says through the power of the Holy Ghost, that thing is done by Rakatala Poshikete. The Holy Spirit gets inside you and gets the worst news and makes it look like it is nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. And before you know that, yes, the job has not come through. But brother, you have joy and you have peace. Yes. They have not yet promoted you, but you, you have joy and you have peace. Yes, things have not yet fallen the way you expect them. But every time you look inside, there is something inside you that is so strong. That is hope. That is hope. That is hope. There are many people here. I know that things have not yet worked through. But people look at you and they don't understand the reason of your faith, your peace. You understand it? Eh? They don't. How do you sleep when the doctor said that you have weeks? Oh, you don't know who I've believed. I am fully persuaded that he that promised is also able to do. What are you talking about? Don't be mistaken because I don't have a job. Eh, I know who I have believed. When this thing starts up one day, you're going to look back and look at my God and say, wow. The God of hope. So you have peace and joy in believing. You have peace and joy in believing. That's a man who has hope. Oh, this is an exercised experience. It just doesn't come. That's why I said, if you've not been there, you can't understand. You can't understand. If you've not woken up one day, and you have to believe God for a meal, and you don't even know how the... And then you come to church, and then they pray. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The angels. Heaven and... You can't understand it. And then somebody's like, how mighty is he? I don't have a job. Things are not working in my life. And then there's the same person who is in the same meeting in a worse situation. They are not only dancers, but even their shoes are out. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. That's your neighbor. You've seen nothing yet. They start a song and say, you make my life so beautiful. Then, and then the person who came with you looks at you and says, but as you are, you have met me here and now. Then they look at your shoe and your old bag. And then you say, there's nothing greater than this. That's why I Forevermore. 
he has done great things then they look at your old hair and you turn back as soon as you're enough you stand up and say he has done great Then you get your classes and put them here. Then you say, "Oh, for me, oh, for me, oh, for me." Feel the turning around for me. Your spouse sends you a divorce paper, and you look at it, and you say, "Create." What can you do? What can you do? Jesus. With your HIV positive results. Name above every other name. What can you change? What can you change? full of glory I don't care what brought you here I don't care what is not working I don't care what is in your pocket I don't care whether what is in your bag I don't care what results you have I don't care how bad it has gone I'm counting let's see just can keep it to mind and when I told that you have done to whoa but I hey I'm counting my blessing I'm counting my
Yesu murunzi Yesu murunzi Yesu murunzi Yesu murunzi Yesu murunzi Yesu murunzi I'm going to 
Why am my heart beat so? I come and tell them say. The Lord is my portion in the land. Counseling. Praise God. If you're here and you say, Apostle Grace, I've heard these things, but I am not born again. I'm not in that covenant. I don't have a personal relationship with God, but with everything I have heard tonight, I feel like I want to receive that God. I want to give you an opportunity to give you time to confess and give your life to the love of your soul to the most wonderful man that ever walked the surface of this earth to the God who loves unconditionally and cares unconditionally and is there unconditionally and speaks unconditionally the one who shed his blood for you that you might live and have life there's a reason why he died. So if you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I have heard your word and I'm convinced that tonight is my day. I believe in my heart that you died and rose again for me. That you shed your blood for my sins. Tonight, I receive you as my Lord and Savior and Father. Amen. God bless you. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Scenario Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041 466 4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero, make manifest.